Hi. Um, I'm really grateful for the inv invitation to come today because I've, um, I've learnt so much um, and so that can only, I hope, help improve my practice. Um, so, um, as uh, was introduced, um, I'm part of a paediatric pain management team and we see children with pain from, for a lot of different reasons, um, from various illnesses, accidents, post-surgical complications, um, and we have had children with Fabry um, come through our clinic um, as part of the process for going on to ERT as well, but hopefully we can help them to manage their pain. Um, as, um, uh, give them additional uh, skills and tools. Um, I guess with pain, um, like pain is really subjective. Um, and so if someone says they've got pain, we absolutely believe them. Um, that's first and foremost. Um, and everyone's pain is different. So while um, people with Fabry have pain, each of you will experience that pain differently. And that's because pain is super complicated. Um, it's very, and we, so I'm just gonna touch on some things for you to think about and consider if you're experiencing pain or if you have a flare up, if there might be some additional contributions to um, why that pain might, uh, the volume might be turning up and some things you might be able to do about it as well. Um, so, There we go. Okay, so um, with pain as a concept, we often think about pain as having volume. So, or we can talk about pain as having volume. So um, things that turn pain up to make it loud, intense, um, and things that, um, or you know, that turn it down and make it quiet um, or might make it go away um, entirely. Um, in, in pain management, while, um, I guess uh, while ideally we'd like to get rid of um, pain and and um, if we would take it away, we can and we throw everything we can at it, but ultimately it's about helping you to manage pain so that you can go on and do the things that you want to do in life um, that are enjoyable and fun and just part of life. So as I said, there's some things that um, contribute to the experience of pain that turn it up and make it louder and there's things that have emerged in research that can also turn it down medicines but we'll talk about some of the other medicine things that can turn down pain as well and this is because pain is a series of very complicated communications throughout what's called our central nervous system so that um, is our spinal, our spinal cord, our nerves and our brain and it's a series of complicated um, communications that occur um, throughout our central nervous system. So pain operates on that central nervous system as a communication but also there's a bunch of other stuff that we'll um, look at just now that also um, rev up our central nervous system. So some examples of what makes pain louder. Um, on the, your left um, is the pain research. Um, sort of, this is a, in, in the nutshell. And then I'm going to um, just talk through the re some, some of the uh, results from a survey that was done here in Australia in 2015. Um, uh, and down the bottom it's listed there, and uh, the report was written in 2016, Fabry, the lived experience, uh, where uh, 55 people with Fabry participated in this survey. So we can see how the pain research and maybe the Fabry experience overlap to maybe amplify the um, pain and, and make it louder. So the research shows um, that pain can be turned up by being able to do desired activities. So we're talking like fun hobbies, um, occupations, so work and school. And from that study done in 2015, um, it impacted children's ability to study. 13% um, was it impacted mo um, moderately and 25% were impacted very or extremely impacted by it. Um, and for the adults, 41% of um, the adults who responded said it impacted their work, um, ability to do work, productivity, um, attendance at work. So the pain research says um, 
but physical activity, so not being able to do um, enough physical activity day to day can turn up pain um, and the experience of pain make pain worse. And then in the survey um, in 2015, um, people reported that um, for children, they reported that for all 44% of them said um, they were very or extremely impacted in their ability to do sport. Um, and for adults, um, it was 17% um, say that they were moderately impacted and 35% said they're very or extremely impacted in their ability to do sport. Um, the the um, pain research shows that social supports really impact pain. If we've got good supports around us, that can help us to manage pain. But if we're feeling fractures in our relationships, people not understanding, there's lots of conflict, um, that that can turn up the volume of our pain and make it worse. And that, um, in again, in the surveys highlighted there with children reporting um, their friendships being impacted, adults talking about um, difficulties in relationships with their partner or spouse and friends um, and being able to engage in a social life that they're wanting to as well. Um, and then again, um, another point from the pain research is that illness, particularly unmanaged illness, and that could be physical or um, mental health, um, can turn the volume up on pain. And certainly um, having a diagnosis of Fabry, particularly if um, it's unmanaged, turn up that experience of pain um, and in the survey 24% uh, of people um, rated themselves as having high or very high levels of psychological distress um, that's compared to about 11% of the general population um, and 2% reported they were receiving treatment for that so something to be mindful of um, another very important factor in pain that wasn't evaluated in sleep, but it would be remiss of me to talk about, is sleep. Um, the research is really, really, um, getting really, really tight and very strong around the importance of sleep in people's experience of pain the next day. So I say that because as a society, we're quite sleep deprived, um, and yet that can be a key area um, if we can intervene that can independently help someone's pain to turn down. So some of the stuff that makes um, pain quieter, um, what we think about, we call it the three M's of pain management. Um, so think of medicines, movement and mind. Um, if you've been to pain clinics before, they they or some of, the, some of the adult ones might still talk about the three Ps, pharmacology, um, physical therapy, and psychological. Um, but we find that the three Ms just fits a bit more neatly for us. Um, so, yeah, we like to look at these three domains and really when we're talking about managing pain, it's not a pick and choose. Um, what we find is uh, it's finding something from each domain. They're like ingredients for a really good cake if you like or whatever your choice is but actually it's finding an ingredient from each domain that's going to work for you which means that you're actually going to give it a go ultimately at the end of the day um, that can help you to manage manage pain so from the literature and from what we know um, with Fabry um, so obviously there's Fabry specific um, med medications and they're, um, they're very effective so they're important to consider um, and um, medicines as we heard about this morning other sort of analgesia are important to think about they're not always um, for every person but there's certainly something to consider um, when we talk about movement um, and the body obviously staying cool when we're talking about um, Fabry is really important and staying hydrated as a strategy for, for um, managing pain, part of the strategy. Um, we talk about gentle movement. So e even when you're having a tough time, doing something small at least because that um, helps to give doses. It, it's like our body's own medicine. It re re it, sorry. Um, it, um, produces, I can't find my words at the moment, um, produces our body's own analgesia, movement does. Um, so that's why it's important to move and um, how that can be helpful and pacing. So not overdoing it or underdoing it, making sure you take regular breaks. 
um, things I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, and then the mind and brain. So I've mentioned sleep. Sleep's really important um, in, as, a, as I said, in terms of managing pain. Um, psychological treatment of anxiety and depression. Um, having fun is a really important part of managing pain. It reduces, it produces um, endorphins, um, makes us feel better and they um, take over from those pain producing pathways. Distraction is another really good one as well. And that's because in terms of the science, it hijacks our attentional pathways in the frontal lobe of our brain. So distraction, making sure it's fun. So it could be listening to music. We have lots of people that find that's really, really good for helping them to manage pain, doing puzzles, um, playing with nice things, you know, having, having something nice to touch, um, but whatever works for you. What I'm just going to um, look at here is um, this section here on deep breathing, relaxation, mindfulness and gratitude, um, uh, particularly because there's, there's very strong evidence for each of these being really effective for managing pain and they all work on different pain pathways. Um, and they're things that you can take away and do this afternoon if you, if you wanted to, if you hadn't given it a try so far. And think of it as increasing or expanding your bag of tricks. The more go-tos that you've got to help manage your pain, um, the more empowered you might feel um, to be on top of things and, and go out and, and live the life that you want to. I guess the, some of the keys with any of these strategies is it's a skill. So just like if you're learning to do anything new, uh, if you're learning to bake or if you're learning to do a sport, um, any learn a language, it's something you need to do over and over again. Um, so we recommend, you know, choosing something that you'll give a go regularly, it, daily preferably, um, and you know, schedule a regular time to do it. Um, so. Deep breathing training is actually got a lot of um, science behind it and ultimately it's about, you know, we talked about that central nervous system um, that pain is produced by. Ultimately, deep breathing training on its own can really dampen down the central nervous system and doing it regularly. Sometimes we get people to do it up to three times a day. Um, and it's really to give yourself lots of doses of soothing and calm to that central nervous system to get it to quieten down, to turn the volume down on pain. It may not, you may not notice a reduction in pain straight away. Um, and that's quite common um, actually with any of these strategies, but it's um, over time, your body is getting small doses of its own medicine. And so your system is actually getting a good dose um, each time you do it, even if you might be not, not noticing um, a change to your symptoms at the time. Um, so we talk about deep breathing training as being that breathing that comes from your belly. So, you know, it can be as simple as you just checking wherever you are, you know, just pop your hand on your belly if you need to, just check, am I check, you know, breathing from my chest or am I breathing from my belly? And if you notice that you're not breathing from your belly, then just taking some slower, lower breaths. Um, if uh, apps, some apps that we recommend, um, are the Calm app, um, that's got some free unlocked parts of it. So I'd suggest uh, using those, don't worry about paying for it. Um, and there's uh, Breathe to Relax as well. There's a whole host of other apps. These are just some that we recommend. Um, even if you've got like a, a smartwatch or device, some of them have like a relax setting. So you can actually, to get you to do some deep breathing for just a couple of minutes. Um, so it's a, one of the things that we might recommend to practice daily. Um, another strategy, um, is uh, guided imagery. So that could be um, closing your eyes and either having a memory of a favourite place or event or creating one in your mind um, and using all of your uh, senses. So, you know, when you're creating it, what can you see? What can you smell, taste, touch, hear? Um, and then once you've really got a vivid picture of that and experience of that, you, you'll be able to go to it quicker and quicker 
with each time that you use that strategy. Um, but if you're wanting some guidance around that, there's a couple of apps that we um, suggest. They're Relax Now and Simply Being. All the apps are free that I'm suggesting today. Muscle relaxation, so or progressive muscle relaxation is another really nice one that um, that you might like to try, and that's you might be familiar with being asked to tense muscle, particular muscle groups and then relax them slowly, um, noticing the difference between tension, what tension feels like, and what relaxation feels like, um, and you can do that throughout your whole body or it could just be for particular parts of your body if you know you're someone who holds a lot of tension for example in your upper back shoulders neck then you might want to do this to just become familiar with that area so you know how to relax that out more quickly because the tenser our muscles are the more pain we're going to produce and mindfulness, um, it's a bit of a buzzword, but it's been around for um, thousands of years. Um, and it's actually got a lot of research behind it in the medical field, um, particularly pain management. Um, and mindfulness, if you're not familiar with it, um, is about being in the here, in the here and now. Um, and you can, it's very, very portable. Um, if you can get the concepts of doing mindfulness, you can do it while you're walking. Just a few, you know, if you're feeling, starting to feel a bit stressed, um, you can do it, you know, on a walk from your car to work. Um, you could do it while you're taking a bite of something to eat, etc. Um, and a really great um, app, and it's also a website, it's called Smiling Mind, and it's Australian based, um, uh, Australian created um, app, and it's being used a lot in schools. There's a whole school program around it here in Australia. And finally, gratitude is um, shown to help to shift um, patterns of thinking. Again, if we do it regularly, if we do it every day, it can actually change the way that we can think. Um, and that includes positive self-talk. Some people might have um, like a little journal that they write and maybe at the end of each day. Um, some people have talked about that they write down the three things they've been thankful for that day or that they appreciate. Um, and here's some other pain management resources if you're interested. Um, they were developed by the Agency for Clinical Innovation, um, which is a pillar of the New South Wales Health Department here, um, and in conjunction with the pain services um, in New South Wales. Um, so there's the, the first website here is Chronic Pain for Everyone, so that's more targeting adults. And the one down the bottom here is for um, teenagers and people in high school who have chronic and persistent pain. So thank you very much.